Your Super Saturday build-up starts here. We have the teams for Paris, France against Wales, although we might have to come up with a new name for Super Saturday. Uh, super Beatdown, Super Thrashing, because um, I don't think it's going to be as competitive as some Super Saturdays we've had in the past. Uh, and I think Wales fans will be the first people to readily accept that. Uh, this video is going to look at both the teams, France and Wales, and then I'll come up with a combined team as well. When you take each player man for man, head to head, who would you pick in a combined matchup? Uh, let's start with France then. Um, who, well, have a terrifying side. Uh, but yes, the, the, the same back line that absolutely tore England to shreds and a forward pack that's even more massive than it was last weekend. Uh, Weenie Antonio comes back in. He's available again. He's at tight head prop. Roman Talfifanua, who usually comes on after about an hour for Paul Willemser, is starting. He's enormous as well. So that's a whole load of tonnage that's just been added to an already pretty frightening French pack, which has answered some questions because players like Cyril Bai and Gregory Aldrit and Charles Olivon, they, they, they weren't poor before England. They, they weren't bad. They just weren't as incredible as they have been in games previously, they were against England. They were immense. And, yeah, that's a, that's a terrifying prospect for Wales. In the case of Charles Olivon, does he not have the look to you like a, a man that's going to be... Could, could well be lifting a World Cup trophy? He just has that look. The chiselled jaw. The, uh, the tall, incredible physique. He just looks like a man that could be holding up that gold trophy. And he played like it last week. That is a frightening French pack. And the interesting thing is that before the tournament, we were like, oh, they're going to miss Cameron Wokey. And um, Wokey and Willemser were their automatic choices at second row. Not anymore. Thibaut Flamont's arguably, arguably been their best player of the whole tournament. Um, and, well, in the second row, it's at the moment, it's Flamont plus one. And Tal Fifanu has got a chance to stake a claim for that other jersey this weekend. Um, in the back line, I mean, Jonathan Dante, what a difference he made. Real focal point and real threat, which just enabled, well, just created more space for the guys outside of him. And uh, let's move over to Wales. And <laughs> Warren Gatland's game of Tom Bowler to pick his team is back. It's almost like I've got a feeling that, like, in the team room, Warren Gatland will get everyone together, put on a blindfold. He's got faces of Wales players on a wall and he'll just chuck darts randomly. Oh, Lewis Rees Samet, you're starting fullback this weekend. It, I called it schizophrenic last week and it's continued in that fashion. It doesn't make a great deal of sense. Nick Tompkins, you're out of the 23 against Italy, but you're starting against France. Aaron Wainwright, you haven't played a single minute of rugby in the Six Nations. You're starting away in France. Um, but yeah, th those are two of the changes. George North comes back into a midfield. Dan Bigger comes back in at 10. Lewis Rees Zamet gets shifted to 15. Alan Wynne Jones comes back into second row. What is going on here? Well, on the one hand, you're like, why are you chopping and changing so much? On the other, I'm kind of, I, I'm kind of sympathetic to it. I'm like, well, what, what harm is it going to do, really? Because Warren Gatlin's got to work, work out a lot of things in his head, answer a lot of questions, and he hasn't got a lot of time. They're not going to win the Six Nations. They're heavy underdogs to go to France and get anything out of the game, so why not? And here's a thought, and this sounds like it's a bit of a joke, but I, I genuinely mean this. Is Warren Gatlin sparing the emotional trauma that could be inflicted upon some of these guys, younger guys particularly. Because Daffith Jenkins is not starting at second row. Chris Chunza hasn't been brought back in. Jack Morgan, I know he was carrying an ankle injury, but he's out and Aaron Wainwright's in. Um, you've got a lot of inexperienced players. Mason Grady and Joe Hawkins in the centre. Uh, out and two experienced people come back in. Do you think there's a chance Warren Gatland is anticipating if we get a hiding against France... I can protect the confidence and the emotional toll that it might take on some of these new guys by just keeping them out of the firing line. Equally, it could just be as simple as this is a really, really good, tough French team. We need to front up physically. So I want experienced campaigners that have been around the block. But I think there's a good argument that even if Wales get hammered, it's not going to affect Dan Bigger's confidence or George North's confidence or Alan Wynne-Jones or Aaron Wainwright. So I think that there's an, there's an argument and maybe it's smart man management on Warren Gatlin's part. As much as you'd like to see Mason Grady and Joe Hawkins get another 80 minutes together to build that relationship, maybe it's good man management from Gatland 
who knows a thing or two about that, let's be honest. As for a combined team then, so if you had access to all 46 players and one to one, one against one, two against two, down to 23, who would you pick in a combined team? Um, sorry, Wales fans. Sorry, Warren Gatland. It doesn't make a lot of pretty reading there, does it? Because I've gone for everybody in blue. There isn't a single Welshman I would pick over the, the French opponent. The, the one that probably got closest is on the wings, where like uh, Rio Dyer is wearing 11 for Wales and Josh Adams is wearing 14. I think they usually wear the other other way round for their region, for their regions. I think, am I right in that? I think I am. In which case, had Josh Adams been wearing 11, I would have put him in the back line, a combined team. But as it is, there we go. Even on the bench, France have got some serious talent coming off of it. Tommy Raphael pushed Makalu a little bit, but there we go. That is the scale of the challenge that faces Wales. And I don't think there's many people hold out a lot of hope, which is arguably a good place to be for Wales. They've kind of got nothing to lose. And England getting absolutely panned last weekend at home means that Wales, with all the issues that they've had going away, in some respects, the pressure's off. I would just summarise this, this matchup with this following clip from Dumb and Dumber, though. And uh, in case you're wondering, in this little, in this little clip, France is the woman. What are my chances? Not good. You mean not good like one out of a hundred? I'd say more like one out of a million. So you're telling me there's a chance. Yeah! <laughs> of course there's a chance, Wales. Of course there's a chance. Otherwise, we wouldn't bother playing the game. Uh, good luck, though, because uh, I think you're going to need it. Enjoy the game. I'll be here for full-time analysis of it and all sorts of stuff in between. If you haven't already, please do hit subscribe. Very close to 10,000 subs, which is amazing. I'm absolutely buzzing. And uh, I'd love you to help me get, get there as well. So um, leave your comments, hit subscribe, and I will see you on the next video.